And if anybody's sitting there notices that it goes off chromey, but it should be fine, it's on airplane mode. Um, and as I said before, I tape all the lectures and I put them they're usually up after the lecture, which is helpful if you missed a lecture or if you want to check something for a paper or whatever, right? Um, first of all, I'm Shannon Bell, and it's one of my favorite courses, probably because it's got sort of all the material that goes into making Heikmann and Nuka, uh, so does that goes into making modern political theory a selection of it. Um, as I said to the people when I came in, I truly apologize for the room. I'm actually kind of appalled myself, and I've been trying to change it for the last two months. Even going through the dean's office, I'll keep at it. If anything else comes available, you'll be totally notified on course announcements. So I want to check a couple of things before we start. One is, do you get the course announcements? when I put them up there. Did you put them on Facebook? Aha, good question. I thought I did, but that might have been for my grad class. Um, I don't think I put a course announcement up for you guys, so I will put one up. Um, I, what I did put up was the syllabus, and you guys got that, so that means you're connected. You, for the class, you need to be connected on Moodle. So if you have it, if you can't get on to Moodle, uh, let me know, and we'll figure it out. I can manually add you, but if you're registered, you should just automatically go on there. So you'll, you'll need that. The syllabus, you've got a printout version, you've got an online version. When we pick presentations, which we'll do after I do an introduction, um, then those will go up there. The discussion form, the way into the discussion form is, is through the Moodle site, and I'll talk about that. So let me take you through the course outline. And maybe what I'll do, so I'll use the one on here too. Not that you can see very well on this, but just so you know it's there. By the way, okay, so class time, 11.32. 2.30, we do a 10, 15 minute break, and there's, I lecture for about an hour and 20 minutes, do the break, then we do a seminar. My office is in the political science department, South 633 Ross. My office hours are Wednesday to day to four, uh, Thursday from three to three, five. If neither of those work for you, and even if they do, if you want to meet me, just send out, because I'm often uh, busy, Send me an email and ask for an appointment. Or if you're going by and I'm there and I don't seem like I'm talking to anybody, come in and see me. Um, I have an espresso coffee maker in my office, so I'm always happy to make coffee for you. Because um, I'm always drinking it myself. I didn't, <laughs> didn't haul any over here. but um, So yeah, do, and if you've got any questions, the other thing with uh, me is either email me. If I don't get back to you in the email, uh, you can also just text me. Okay, so so that's obviously the universe. Wait, that's the university number. That's the fact that that's my number. I'm like, where did my number go? Yeah, just text me, and um, I'll respond to you. So like, don't don't worry about bothering me because if I answer, I'm not bothered. Okay. Otherwise, if I'm busy, I'll just ignore it for a while. Okay. So I um, have been teaching political theory for quite a while, and I tend to do uh, aesthetics and politics. Uh, that's my graduate course this term. I'm doing cyber politics next term, politics of cyberspace and, and digital networks. Um, I do post-structural stuff, and my own work is kind of divided into like four different areas. One is, is more traditional theory. The other is aesthetics, where I do a project uh, shooting theory where I image philosophical uh, concepts. I also write a lot about uh, artists' work. They ask me to write about it, so I use the theory that we do in this class and other classes and apply that. Um, I also teach general semantics, which is a neurolinguistic way of, of organizing your environment in terms of workshops. And I've done quite a bit of work, I'm just looking to see if they're coming in here. Um, I've done quite a bit of work on sexuality. 
So the most recent, I, I have two or three books that are on sexuality. Um, the most recent stuff is on the way of transgression, arguing, like, no surprise, that what's considered transgressive in one time period is now, like, kind of standard. Okay. Um, so I was looking at an art exhibition there. Please come on in. There's a syllabus. There's a syllabus there, which you missed was me apologizing for the room, saying I'm going to try and get a better room. Find a seat and move it wherever you want. Um, kind of going over the layout of, of the class, my office, hours, time, that kind of stuff. Let me take you through the course description. So what we're doing in modern political thought is bringing together, and I'm, it's so funny because Okay, I'm really committed to bringing together political theory of digital imagery. Um, and we are in, like, I swear, a 1980s classroom. So that was one of my arguments for trying to get another room. Um, I thought technology is working, so okay. So the idea then is to transpose Martin Heidegger's claim regarding technology, but you can't think technology technologically to the study of political thought. So the argument is that you can't think political theory within language simply. So Heidegger, of course, contended that in order to think technology from a different site, you can use art. Now what we use in this class are visual images to supplement and enhance political theoretical concepts. So the aim is to produce image and text-based political theory. So what you'll see is on the, the course uh, Moodle site, and I'll probably use more PowerPoint than I will the films that I have videoed, but the films that I, hey, come on in, grab a syllabus. No, it's okay, stop, grab a syllabus. Yeah, don't worry about being late. I have a really ironclad attention span, so I know. Um, no worries. And I can actually read emails and teach at the same time, although I won't. So, what then, um, the aim is to produce image and text-based political theories. So we're on the course outline, first paragraph of course description. What you'll see is films that I videoed or collaged from found footage are going to accompany each lecture. I tend to embed them in a PowerPoint, um, and you'll have a PowerPoint presentation on each lecture, which is posted on the website itself. So basically, we're, I'm taping the lecture for people that came in later, um, and you also have a PowerPoint of what I've gone over in the lecture. Partly, and there's a film as well, usually. Uh, partly, I recognize that the material is difficult, so I wanted to make it accessible uh, in terms of like providing the key points and, and things like that. So the course requirement, in addition to the two papers, So the course requirement, in addition to the two papers and two presentations, are two short films, one minute and two minutes, relating to a theoretical concept. And they accompany the two essays. I'm going to put on additional office hours in November and March to assist with the film aspect. It can be found footage. It can be shot on your phone. It's pretty easy. I mean, I'm going to assume, like most people, can I just get a sense that most people have shot film on their phone? At this point, like, what? Yeah. So in that sense, it's pretty easy now. When I first started teaching this, in, uh, using this method in 2007, people ha were using cameras more, but like, once you start using, like, your, your um, phone camera, it becomes really, really easy. And very accessible. And if you've got a GoPro, I've shot a lot of stuff on GoPros. If you've got a GoPro, you can, like, hook it to wherever you want to shoot from. I'll just shoot. So, the theorists of the course we're going to investigate, we start with Kant, then we go to Hegel and Marx and Louis Foucault, Jacques Lacan, Jacques Rancière is our very first thinker, Judith Butler, Gayatri Spivak, Edward Said, George Sorrell, Anise Cesaire, Carl Schmidt, Walter Benjamin, Franz Fanon, Slovo Zizak, Martin Heidegger, Herbert Marcuse, and Paul Virilio. What I'm 
what you may find there is, is people across the ideological spectrum. Um, they tend to be more Marxist um, and also critical theorists and also post-colonial theorists. You will find um, Carl Schmitt, who's a, a German legal theorist that, that was responsible for formulating the state of exception in the Weimar Constitution. He's on there because of the concept of friend enemy he has in terms of defining the political. So the course then is going to begin with Jacques Rancière. Um, and what I'm going to do, you don't need to read that there and there. It's going to begin with Rancière's ignorant schoolmaster. And I wanted to show you something. There we go. I wanted to show you something while I'm in the readings. I've stuck close to the uh, copyright laws as York understands them. You'll find the readings are in the bookstore, and most of the readings, the excerpts that you're using, including the Jacques Lancier text, is on the um, Moodle site. Now, I've done that so you can virtually take the course because a lot of these are excerpts, no problem. Um, you can virtually take the course without purchasing the books, or you can purchase the books you want. I wanted to make it affordable. If anybody's having trouble accessing the PDF, so the link's online, just let me know. So we're going to begin with the ignorant schoolmaster. And what's interesting about the ignorant schoolmaster is the big argument there is you don't really need a teacher. So then I'm off the hook, and away we go. Um, what means is that it's a real response to the Enlightenment ideas of knowledge and mastery. So the idea there is that what, a, what somebody who's teaching you tends to do is stultify because they've got their own set opinion, right, and their own set way of doing it. So I like to start with that. That was written in the 1960s, and it was written in Paris in response to student demonstrations around education. The course then shifts to what's considered part of the core of the Enlightenment thought, and that's two pieces by Kant, one on Enlightenment and universal history, the second one. So his first piece is a classic piece, What is Enlightenment? And this is how he's writing about that. The second piece is Kant's understanding of universal history, of cosmopolitan and sort of a world community. And these are short articles, by the way. And they're both, they're all on the on the Ludo site. Then we go to the very famous section of Hegel's writing on self-consciousness that's picked up by Marx, that's picked up by Said, by Butler, uh, by Fanon. So we're gonna, I think it's important to do that because people then trace it. The, it goes forward, it travels forward. We're going to take a look at two pieces by Marx. That is Marx's critique of the material and intellectual impoverishment of the Enlightenment through alienation and fetishism. Fetishism comes from a section in Chapter 1 of Capital Volume 1, and alienation comes from the 1844 manuscripts. And what you'll see then if you go the readings are in alphabetical order. What you'll see is it links to the mar marxist.org and, and you'll have access to them there. Then, from Marx, we're, Lacan, we're, we're taking a look at Lacan's concept of the gaze that's used to sort of interrogate the subject-centered visualness or visuality of the Enlightenment. We revisit Kant's understanding of enlightenment, according to Foucault. Then we go to Butler on self and gender, which interrupts the enlightenment thought from the future. We do Spivak's brilliant and changing, sort of intellectually changing and difficult piece, Can the Subaltern Speak, shows that knowledge isn't innocent, but rather reflects the interests of its producers. Edward Said's traveling theory is used to discuss how theory and ideas travel from theorist to theorist, from place to place. 
time period to time period, and how they change in the circulation. For example, how Hegel's understanding of the dialectic changes when Fanon uses it, how self-consciousness changes when Fanon uses it. That's the end of the first part. The second part of 3040 moves to what's considered the counter-enlightenment, and it's the thought of, it, it basically moves to revolution, violence, and technology, right? So the second part, and it's a full year course, um, moves to Sorel and his understanding of violence that's influenced 20th and 21st century theorists of violence. Uh, technology, violence, and resistance are sites of modern and post-contemporary political thought. Cesare's 1955 discourse on colonialism responds to the violence of Hegel's dialectic of recognition and provides a colonial context to Marx's concepts of alienation and commodity fetishism. This is followed by the definition of sovereignty as seen through the political lens of Schmidt. Then the discussion moves to Walter Benjamin's critique of violence followed by Fanon's on violence that distinguishes between systemic colonial regime violence and revolutionary violence. It's a very important distinction. So in Fanon, oh, there's a movie, there's a documentary showing that hot docs on Fanon um, from, I believe, September 17th to 26th. It's, a very, it's very important to make the distinction that Fanon makes between violence of the regime, colonial regime violence, and revolutionary violence. Zizak brings Schmidt's concept of the friend enemy and Sorel, Benjamin, and Fanon's high understanding of violence together, contending that three forms of violence, subjective violence, objective violence, and systemic violence, are inherent features of post-contemporary liberal capitalism. Then we move on to Heidegger's uh, essay concerning technology, Marcuse's essay, Some Implications Concerning Modern Technology. They're read in tandem with Virilio's critique of technology. The very famous book, Speed and Politics, we end with that which theorizes violence, technology, and velocity as constituting the speed of the political, the accelerated speed of the political. So we're on page two for the person that just came in. Um, what we've got is a lecture course and a seminar tutorial course. The weekly format is like one hour, and I would say 20 minutes. I don't usually, maybe one hour and a half. I don't usually go one hour and 45 minutes lecture. So having said that, then I probably will. But not today. Today we're doing something else. Um, then we take a break. I say 10 minutes, but it's usually 15. We come back and we do a 50 minute to hour tutorial where you guys do presentations. Those are not taped. What the, the syllabus says is books in accordance with York University Fair Dealing Copyright Guidelines. There's, there's online links to books that are provided and books are available in the York Bookstore and PDFs of the excerpts are provided. And for the person that just, or people that just came in, mostly everything is on the Moodle site. You don't need to buy books or, because we're dealing with a lot of excerpts which are, are legally, I'm legally able to put up there. Um, essays, but there are books at the bookstore, so it's up to you. Essays and book chapters, again in accordance with York's Fair Dealing, um, are available as PDFs on the Moodle website. And they're out there. So in terms of assignment, discussion form, which you're going to access, On the, middle, on the middle site. And these are all the PowerPoints that are going to be the lectures, right? Are going to accompany the lectures. I left them on there. Weekly concept fields are on there. Essay assignments. So where's the discussion for? Tell me if you see it when I if I go by. Okay, keep going. To your left. I saw to my left. To your left, right of your um, no, discussion. No, 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 right there. There. The general. It's right there. Also on the sidebar. Sidebar, yeah. Oh, okay. That's what you're meaning to my left. Yes. All right, then. So let's see if that actually, all right, so discussion form. So what you want to do is, there's no discussion, you add a discussion topic. And it counts the same whether you're starting a thread or you're responding to one. It's 10%, 5% for each term. 
Oh, hang on, pick up a, pick up a syllabus. We're on page three now, okay? And welcome and try and find a seat. There's some over here. So what I expect is like one weekly post or response to a post. So remember, it's like, and don't, I was gonna say, don't mess up on this, because it's 10% of the grade, so if you, if you, oh, and also, you know, you know, I, initially, we had, like initially, when I was first doing this, people didn't quite have their discussion form etiquette down, but now there hasn't been, so you know, no flaming out, no, like, with respect. How's that? Um, so, and that should be fine, there's been, there's been no issues for years. So what you want to do is either start a thread, and you know, it's, it's something as simple as if somebody posts their seminar presentation and discussion questions, and you want to answer one of the discussion questions online, go for that, because it does two things. You can always pull it up in the seminar, um, and it gives you grade for, for doing the discussion form. Yes, yeah, questions are good, actually. So I have to submit one every week? Uh, you just have to put something on the discussion form that relates to what we're talking about uh, weekly. So yeah. either a question or... Well, you don't have to actually, you can put a question if you want. Now, how do I get that? Point how do you get the grade? Then how do you get the... Because in the past, people like to write essays on that, and I'm not trying to write No, you don't want to write an essay. Good point, yeah, actually. Or like big paragraphs, because it's like 5%. No, no, but it's 5% for the whole term. Yeah, so how can I get that little So what you want to do is do a little paragraph like this. So like it. 200 words? Or less for just your, yeah. See, because what's up, the presenter's going to say, he's going to, they, or she, are going to put their whatever question it is. Like, you know, like somebody could say if they're presenting on Kant, what's Kant's understanding of enlightenment? So, or something like that, or does it have any relevance today? You can respond to that. But you don't have to write like, it's not like an essay. It's like, respond to it, like, you know, about that much. Okay, now, how are you going to give us the percent? Are you going to be judging it by the quality? Or just that's the not, hold on, that's not, for, that's not for your presentation. That's just when you're doing the online participation in the discussion form. Okay? The presentation, I think, is 250 words, and then you ask questions, and we answer the questions. So I'll get to that. So what I'm talking about right now is just simply the weekly participation on the discussion. We just write something. Yeah, related to the course. Right, but right. but you know, it, I mean, part of the what people do that's very interesting, and that is that they'll take something that the thinkers are. Oh, is it? Bolton. They'll take something that the thinkers are writing about and related to what's going on today. That's always good because you can always understand that better, right? So in that sense. It's not anything, but it's anything that comes up that's related to uh, the discussion at hand. And it's pretty easy. What I was warning you about is like, don't not do it, because you end up losing 10%. And so like 10% is gonna bump you probably from an A to a B. Um, the concept paper is 15%. It's six pages, double spaced, or 1,500 words. And it's due on a sliding date from December 1 to December 27th. Um, I figure you can sort yourself out whether you want to hand it in December 10th, December 1, December 27th, depending on what else you got going on. And I also didn't want to privilege Christmas. Yeah, because she's like, why not write a Christmas day? Okay. Yeah. So you were saying before the concept paper and the films are done. Together, together. yeah. And the film is a one minute sort of uh, presentation of the ideas in the concept film. Uh, so say you're doing a film on time. Like, sorry, say you're doing time as your concept film. You're taking a look at time, and, and I, I specified it all, we'll go through it, right? But say you're taking a look at time in like five of the figures. But then you may want to shoot different things on time. You know? Uh, and I mean, it's, it, it could be like time in terms of a speeded up process or something coming alive and dying, like, you know, like it could be different clocks. It could be a musical composition that you found on time with a steady image. Like it's really, it's really kind of up to you. So basically also, you know, in terms of the, the found footage or the shot footage, you're going to, like you do the film, you're gonna get the grades. 
I mean, partly one of the things I'm about is making sure people get grades if they do the work, right? And having enough diverse work on there so if you're not as strong writing papers, but you're strong visually and you're strong in terms of presentations, right? So it's like, you know, um, it, the, the aim of the course is to give people the options to build their grade. And one, one of the main aims. The second paper is 30%, due again a sliding deadline, 1 to 15. Papers, um, or the film is 10%, and again the same sliding deadline. You hand them in online on the Moodle site. There's a space for that. Uh, the film usually just goes in a discussion form. So, seminar presentation and discussion questions are 20%, 10% each, ter each term, 200 word summary, which goes back to your initial question, and two questions on one reading each term, which we're going to pick by lot, which is by numbers. And then, what I have is a sign-in sheet for seminar. Um, it's 5% for each term, you sign in, and we discuss. Do you have your hand up or no? No. So if you go over to the next page, it kind of explains everything on page four. We'll start with the seminar presentation and discussion questions. So each person, each term, is responsible for producing a 200 word summary and two discussion questions based on the seminar reading that they picked out of the paper from the plastic bag. So the summary and questions go on the Moodle site by six o'clock or sometime Tuesday night. So that people actually can respond to them as part of their discussion form weekly participation. And I expect you to be responding weekly, not just all at the end, right? And then, very importantly, they're presented in person for discussion in the seminar portion of the course. And we're going to select them today. Yeah, today's the third, it says the fifth and the ninth. So let's just take a look how I did that. What's the first day of class, the second term? Eighth. Okay. Well, ignore that and I'll correct it on the digital one. So we're going to pick them today and on the 9th. Now the discussion form, this is separate. What to post? To go back to your very good question. Observations, comments, musings could be written, images, audio files regarding issues relating to the week's readings. It can be a response to the presenter's question. And I expect each person to do one entry that is a post or a response per week. So the intent is to get an online discussion going that's going to supplement the seminar portion of the course. The seminar discussion, which is one hour in the weekly lecture or a little bit more. So if you've got, if we have five or six people presenting, it'll be a little bit longer than an hour, but we'll gauge that. Weekly in-person participation in the seminar hour of the course, and there's a sign-in sheet. So you sign in. I get to know who you are. Um, the essays, which, I'm, which are concept papers. Some examples of concepts that can be investigated are subjectivity, emancipation, fetishism, depoliticization, domination, alienation, passion, power, violence, gaze, decision, friend, enemy, labor, work, time, will, equality, freedom, master, slave, coming out of Hegel, redefined by Fanon, um, and others, aesthetics, nothingness, truth, morality, values, thinking. So the concept paper one, it's this 1,500 word paper, six pages. It's gonna pursue a concept that interests you. It doesn't have to be any of the ones listed. Derived from the course readings. And the first term course readings are 12 course readings. You have for the essay you use five. You know, so there's Butler, Foucault, Hegel, Kant, Kant, Lacan, Lacan. Um, Marx, Marx, Rancière, Said, and Spivak. And it's up to you which five you're going to use. Um, say you were going to do something on traveling theory, so obviously you use Said, and you probably take a look at how Marx's concepts traveled in like different people. Or say you were going to do education, obviously you'd use Rancière, um, and then see what other kinds of emancipation, or, or is emancipation, the Rancière is talking about the same or different, or how is it different from what Kant's talking about? And then the concept paper on the second concept paper is longer. Um, it's still, there's 10 readings on second term, but some of those are books. That's why there's only 10. And you pick five of those again. 
Now the films on page five, the films are visual auditory color productions of the concept pursued in papers. They can be composed of several images, sound collages, a single image sound color with text from the selective readings or without text. What's crucial is that in the paper, you indicate how the film supplements it in a paragraph. So one of the ones I like to use is, as an example, a film addressing the concept of speed could be something like motionless water. It could be images and sounds of superbikes engaged in a race, which has an incredible sound, with text from the readings. It could be motionless water mixed with the soundtrack of superbikes acceleration or superbike racing images coupled with the sound of almost still water. It could be a mix of all these options or anything else. Um, it's your call regarding how images, sounds, colors interact. With the written text, people have had their friends and family in the films, if that's okay with your, your I mean, to get them to enact something. Um, so it's entirely up to you. You can have, obviously with their consent, people in the film or, like I would stay away from shooting random people. I always do that in my own work, right? Like, I just think it's like not ethical. And it's not. The two films, I mean, if you're, in a, if you're, if you're shooting commodification and you're in a shopping area and you want, like, you know, it's like Christmas, because a lot of people shop their stuff in their Christmas, so that was an easy one, right? And you show the stuff, oh, this is a slide too. So you show the stuff that, you know, the consumer goods, and then you just do a pan of like all these people milling around, but you're not showing their faces. I mean, that's okay. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is like, okay. So then they can be shot on phone camera, digital still video camera, computer camera. They can be found footage. They can be altered. Um, you can pull a movie clip, but don't just pull a one minute movie clip. You have to mix it with something, right? And so they can be a mixture of original and found footage. You can process it as a quick time if you're working on a map, or you can process it as an MP4, or well, you're gonna have to, when you, when you upload it, or a, a MOV for uploading. Um, and it can be uploaded I don't know, I assume people have a YouTube account, they're free, so you upload it on YouTube and provide a link, or you can upload it. I use Vimeo, because I sometimes need to upload about 20 gigabytes um, a week, um, especially when we're doing interviews in the department and when I'm also shooting my lectures, right? All right, so both of those have, for the, what you'll need if you don't have one, if you don't have an account, they're free, and then you just provide the link and put it on the, um, discussion form with the thing is like, this is my first video for the title of it. So if you're using a PC, the Windows Movie Maker can be downloaded for free. And then if you're using an Apple, you're using iMovie and it processes as a quick time. Okay, let's go then to, so I'm just gonna take you through, I mean the discussion form is pretty obvious. The course, the course, um, the mood, they've improved the mood a little bit. When if I need to contact you, like if I need to say, hey, hi, grab a, hi, hello, grab a, please. Um, if I need to say, hey, for some reason I'm gonna be late for class, um, or we need to do something different, I don't know. I use course announcements, so that should come up for you. The readings are there. The lecture PowerPoints are there, and I'm starting with the Rancy or the, or we're starting with the Rancy or the Ignorant Schoolmaster, chapters one to three. Um, I will upload the weekly lectures for this year. And I don't know why those are still on there, but I'll get them off. And the weekly concept films are on there. You can take a look at those. I may sometimes play them. The first term concept paper you upload there, the second term upload there. And I think that's fairly clear. So if you turn to page six, you'll see that what I've been talking about, the course on the course outline, is divided into the weeks, right? And there's numbers beside each of the weeks. So what we're gonna do, and I'll just take you through really quickly. So we're starting off with Rancier, the Ignorant Schoolmaster, next week. We're doing that again on the 18th. You'll see that there's numbers for, for seminar presentations. 
Then we're going to Kant, the answer to the question, what is enlightenment? And Foucault's response to that, what is enlightenment? Then we're doing Kant's ideal for universal history with cosmopolitan intent, which is kind of a model where the UN develops out of. Then we're going to do Hegel's self-consciousness. October 16th, there's no class, it's reading week. We come back, we do Marx's A Strange Labor and his Commodity Fetishism. Then we do Lacan, the split between the eye and the gaze, and the four fundamental, or an anamorphosis. November 6th, we do Butler's Subjects of Sex and Desire, Spivak's on November 13th, Can the Subaltern Speak, Saeed's Traveling Theory, and then I thought for November 27th, we could have done Nietzsche, but I thought what we'll do is we'll, I'll recap the Rancière, Kant, Foucault, Hegel, Marx, Lacan, Butler, Spivak, and Said. So I'll try and recap them in a way that's interesting and brings them all together. So you've got, and I haven't done that before, but um, in talking to last year's class, they had kind of said, hey, well, that would be really useful. So I'm happy to do that. I mean, you will be missing Thus Spoke Zarathustra, and we'll see how it works. I personally like Thus Spoke Zarathustra better, but I actually think, as part of my responsibility, um, and it's kind of hard to do, so it's already kind of interesting for me to like recap it all and have it, have it so it sets you up so you can write an essay and know different themes that come out of it and stuff. So I think, I thought that was, a good way, a good way to go. I won't go over the second term readings right now, obviously. I will do that in the first class and second term. What I'd like to do, first of all, is see if there's any questions. And then if there's not questions, I will go around the room and I will do this very high-tech way of picking seminar But before we do that, and then I'm going to type them in. And once uh Book. <laughs> this is my book. Once bonus, if you get number one, okay, you gotta do it next week, but I need to just pick up. Because after we pick the presentations, we're done. Um, so what we'll do is, I mean, if you get number 44, hey, you're here to the end with me. Um, and I'm gonna write your names in, and then I'll make sure it's up on the Moodle site. If you've got any, okay, let's see if there's any questions. Can we do trades? What? Can we do trades? Yes, oh, that's a good one. Okay, well, that's up to you guys, but if you're going to do a trade, you got to do it in the room. In the room in front of you? Yeah, because otherwise, yeah, Three what? Years. Because I A, you can be buying the trade, but I don't know what position on that is, but fine, whatever. Um, <laughs> or B, you can say, no, I traded, and the person would say, no, I, I didn't realize that. So I want to, if you're doing a trade, I want the trade done here so I can put the appropriate name in. I mean, what you can do after everybody picks, if you indicate you want to do a trade, but okay, well, we can do that. If anybody wants to trade, because people have different schedules. So we'll all pick, or you're all pick, I'm not picking. Okay, so you'll all pick, and then we can do a five minute, you know, if say five people want to trade, they put their hands up, they want to trade, they say what it is. If somebody wants to trade with them, that's okay. I don't know about that. I mean, we'll see about that. You can do that in terms of your trade <laughs> Okay, so we got the trade question. We got anything else in terms of questions? I should give you a shirt this blue belt. Um, okay, I'm going to close the door now. See what out there yelling and I'll pass it around. Anything, but if you think of anything while we're, while we're doing this, I'm going to cut the filming because we don't need it anymore for this.